Buffalo stay true. <laughs>
what's called club scene. Goes out to anybody who's ever been thrown out of a club by the bouncers. Next one is uh, taking the dark side a little bit on the metal tip. It's called Arm to the Teeth. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Exactly what's going down right now in the studio with these Hep Cats. I'll tell you, 
Guitar player Trevor Trend over here is wearing nothing but a bullet belt and a six inch piece of duct tape. Drummer Josh over here is wearing pink leotards and a tutu. Bass player Tattoo Shane to my left is clad only in a pair of purple leg warmers and matching purple fila tennis shoes. I, of course, am wearing a full suit of plate armor and am ready to ride forth and do battle against the system. My sword is ready. My sword shall not falter. Blood will flow like a river. The only singing to be heard on that day would be the sweet singing of swords. Go, cat, go. Okay, man, and like, while we're on the air here, I'd like to like drop uh, some respect to uh, the great beat poet Allen Ginsberg who died last week. I have seen the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. A little bit by old age, too. Manufactured identity. Minnesota. And if you like what you hear, or even if you don't like what you hear, you can come see us play uh, live at Gilman Street in Berkeley with uh, Spaz, Be Numb, and Fall Silent on Saturday. I'm not allowed to tell you like uh, how much it costs, but you probably can figure out that simple math. Uh, anyhow, come on down and check out that live punk rock show where you can capture the true energy of the performance, which is somehow lost through its transfer over the airwaves. Okay, this one's called This Means War. <laughs> take a break because rock and roll music is, uh, is really hard on us. Okay, this one calls Birth of Retribution is Anger. It goes out to everyone who's planning to axe murder their parents tonight.
progress. Eighty-nine point seven KFJC. That was Code Thirteen here live in the KFJC studio, and they'll be playing for a little while longer after they conduct an interview right now. Actually, I think they went somewhere else, so maybe we'll play a track before they come up here. Here's something from the, let's see, Carcass Grinder Split. Here is Cripple Bastards. Actually, no, they are here. Okay. So, live in the KFJC studio, we have the four members of Code 13. Wow, that was a great set, you guys. Um. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. This is where we all get really quiet and we're ready to So if you guys could talk close to the mics when you talk, kind of get your mouth. <laughs> okay. Yay, so I suppose so. we should introduce ourselves. Uh, clad only in a piece of duct tape and a bullet belt. <laughs> the uh, Trevor Trend, the guitars, that's me. Yo. No, I'm Felix Havoc on vocals. Uh, Tattoo Shane on bass. I'm Josh. World Can Wiss. <coughs> Mad Band Drummer. Blast. <laughs> Josh Blast. <laughs> the Song Destroyer, as we heard earlier. Wow, okay, so, so I asked some questions. Okay, well, I guess first off. Um, Wait, before you ask any questions, there's something I want to say about interviews in general, okay? <laughs> like, band members get interviewed, and people ask these, like, deep, like, socio political questions. Like,. At what point does a musician become an observer of, of society? Like, how much does it really matter what I have to say now that I'm singing in a band than it did before I was just some guy who, like, worked construction, you know? Like, does anybody care more what ta Shane thinks as a tattoo artist or as a musician? He never gets interviewed for being a tattoo artist, does he? But he gets interviewed for being a musician all the time. So, like, I really want to, like, call into question the whole idea of the band interview as being, like like band musicians have some sort of special insight i mean is are we really producing some sort of role as as observers and documenters of society and therefore somehow reflecting like uh our society and 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 being some sort of like mirror to the the reality that is placed in front of us or are we just some dudes in a band and like have nothing more to say than like are we, are some, we not, uh, some dudes who aren't in a band are I we mean, not responsible for our music though indeed the message that we uh, convey Okay, no. so ask questions now. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Now that no one wants to talk to you. Because <laughs> you guys are role models and little 12 year olds sitting at home, you know. Well, those they are scary stuff. Yeah, you, I don't know, man. That, those say. kids got to get on their skateboard, get their dad's gun, and go start something on their own <laughs> because, like, it's not up to us. <laughs> well, um, I want to ask you uh, when this lineup change happened, what happened to Criminal Shane, and how oh. did uh, <laughs> Jeff. Josh. Josh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How did Josh come into the picture? And well, Criminal Shane attempted to pull off the biggest caper of his career, and uh, <laughs> it backfired. <laughs> it backfired on him, and he's now doing uh, 25 to life in a maximum security prison in Stillwater, Minnesota. Um, we haven't been allowed to visit him yet, although we did see him at the trial, and he had shaved his head and tattooed an inverted cross on his forehead. And uh, he carved a pentagram into his hand and uh, flashed it at the cameras, and uh, we're going to be using that as cover on our next record. Um, so due to his lengthy uh, incarceration, until he's paroled, um, we, we did toy with the idea of having him record with us over the phone. He's but, on too um, anyway. Yeah, the sedatives they've given him are, are really impeding his playing. So um, we borrowed Josh from uh, another band in the Twin Cities called Invey. Can you tell them about your other band, Josh? They're playing another hardcore band in Minnesota, and uh, one of their friends saw me play and said, hey, this guy can play almost as crappy as Shane can, so why don't we come play in Code 13? And I said, okay. Oh, don't be so down on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> really, the, there's, there's only like a handful of people that can play like the kind of fast hardcore that we do in, in Minnesota, and, and It's Josh, a workout. Yeah. yeah, Josh was one of the few that, that could, <clears throat> could fill those boots, so. <clears throat> yeah, with no boots, too. Ah. Yeah. yeah, he plays bootless. <laughs> Yeah, he, kind of he played uh, wearing nothing but his pink leotards and tutu with no no shoes, barefoot. How do, how do you play with no shoes? Doesn't the beater hit your top of your feet and boot give you bruises? Yes. Yes, and you still do it. He's That's hardcore. Great. I <laughs> he so guards blast for fun. Man. You gotta spill your blood. <laughs> 
Wow, so are you three the original members then? Yeah, uh, yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and when did you guys start, and who started Code 13? Uh, I suppose it was about four, four and a half years ago. It was, yeah. It was quite that long? No, it was about, about three, three years ago. Three years? Um, well, we were like, uh, I was alone in a dark room, and uh, a vision came to me, and uh, so I stripped off all my clothes and drew a pentagram on the floor in goat blood, and I lit a candle at each point of the pentagram, and on the third Hail Satan, uh, uh, there was an opening in the, in the sky above me, and uh, blood poured through, and uh, then a, a great demon, a great horned winged demon came forth with like a pitchfork, and uh, told me that it, I had been chosen to spread like the word of evil um, in the mortal realm, and that these two, uh, that is Shane and, and Trev, would be my accomplices in this in this act, and uh, so therefore, um, you know, this 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 sort of vision uh, came came to be reality, and we started um, we started having practices and whatnot. And uh, actually, the uh, the the Satanic um, Church of Minnesota had a special benefit fundraiser and bought us all of our equipment was donated so that that people could hear the message, and uh, you know, the evil would be would be spread throughout the land. Wow. Uh, now, do you want to know the real story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have nothing. No. No. <laughs> huh? We, uh, I don't know. We were just like some guys who wanted to start a band. I mean, yeah. Was that after Destroy? Yeah, Destroy had been broken up for a little while. I think we still had some mixing to do and some overdubs to do on the album, but uh, I had been in Destroy for like five years, and we had gone much more in like a 